the Sack Kings, DeMar DeRozan in the building. So great to have you with us. Thank, thank, thank you thank for you. being here. Definitely yeah. honored to be here. Six-time All-Star. We're going we're gonna to get to the new team. Obviously, really exciting. Think you'll push them over the edge. A ton of promise. But I want to talk about this book mm -hmm. and the even bigger story. Can you tell me this? In 2018, you tweeted, this depression's getting the best of me. Mm -hmm. This is pre-pandemic. Yeah. You're vulnerable. Yeah. It's taking courage. Now, fast forward six years later, you're writing this book and telling your story. Where were you then versus where you are now? Um, then, you know, I, I, I was extremely lost and not knowing why. Because everything was going so great for me career-wise. At the height of my career, All-Stars, winning. Everything was going perfect, you know, from a career standpoint. But not knowing emotionally and mentally where I was, where I was at. And I think that night, tweeting that tweet, was me just hitting the wall. And everything since then been me kind of trying to build myself back up, you know, from 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 the human standpoint. Hey, uh, DeMar, DeMar DeRozan, it's, go ahead, Steve. It's it's, it's 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 good to see you, my brother. First of all, Molly and and Doggy, y'all y'all are sitting next to one of the best people you could ever meet in professional sports. Everybody loves this brother. It don't it don't get much better than him right there as a person, not to mention the fact he's been averaging over 24 a game over the last three years and shooting better than 48% from the field over the last six years. So major props to you. I want to know, however, when you talk about this book and when you reveal some of the troubles that you were going through, who in the NBA community was of great assistance to you? Because I know guys like Kevin Love and others mm -hmm. have spoken out about this in the past, and Kevin Love is another class act a uh, big-time person as well. Who in the NBA community was of assistance to you during Man, those times in any way? It, it, I think I, I've been lucky um, to have, one, some great teammates that was there for me from a brotherhood standpoint that was there for me right away. You know, obviously, big shout-outs to Kevin Love, um, you know, coming out speaking his, his story. But so many guys just kind of, you know, came to me in a different site outside of basketball. And the feeling I got from it was, you know, me speaking for, for them as well. Um, and that meant, that meant the world to me. It's hard just to pinpoint, you know, a couple, a couple people. But it's been, you know, the brotherhood we have within the league, guys reaching out, me having a conversation with a lot of guys, and guys telling me their story, how inspired they, they, they was. It, mean, it, mean, it meant a lot to me. So it's hard just to point out one, one, one group of, you know, people and coaches. There's been a lot of coaches over the last couple of years that has been very in instrumental um, for me coming out with this whole process that, that I'm going through. And sell a million of them. I'm glad you had the guts to do it. Sell <laughs> yeah. a million of them. Uh, let me ask you a basketball question. It's interesting. You know, the Bulls, you've been on these teams. You've averaged, first off, you play every game. Mm -hmm. 79 games he plays. Yep. He don't take any days off. Yeah. He plays. That's number one. Number two, you Bulls are a playing team, and I know I read the quotes after you lost to Miami. You know, I like to see us get – I don't want to play in these games anymore. Yeah. I want to be a little further. Yet you went to a team in the Western Conference that's better than the Bulls, mm -hmm. but the conference is better, and last year they were in the playing. Mm -hmm. Did you consider the stack of where the Kings are in a rugged conference before you made that decision? Um, one, I wanted the challenge. I feel like when you, when, you, when you take on a challenge, it brings the best out of you every single night, you know um, – me looking at the Western Conference, playing in the Western Conference before, it brings the best out of you, you know, and I, I kind of wanted that challenge. Like you said, I, I, I look forward to playing every single night, but I also want that challenge every single night and being able to play with a guy like De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis with the year that they had before, you know, even last year before injuries and, you know, they was a top team in the conference. You know, I just felt felt like I could be that 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 piece that could definitely take them over, over, over the top. And the way they even approached me, um, they had the utmost belief in me that made it made it feel even you know more than possible. Well, let me say this. I mean, what 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 do they want? A cookie? They damn well need to believe in you. I mean, please, you Demar Derozan for crying out loud. The Kings ain't dumb. They know they need somebody, Mr. Mid Range himself. They just were smart. As far as I'm concerned, they got over because you deserve more than the money that you got paid. You gave them a gift. You deserve more than that. <laughs> but having <laughs> said that, having said that, having said that, I do have to ask you this though, because I've been always tempted. And I want to reveal this to Molly. I've said this in front of Molly before, yeah. not in front of Doggy. I want to know how you feel about this. One of the most painful moments in your career, I believe, I don't know, mm -hmm. I never asked you this, was when you when you departed from Toronto because mm -hmm. Masai brought in Kawhi Leonard. And I know they won the championship that year, but I've often said this. 
The kryptonite for the Toronto Raptors franchise at that particular moment in time was LeBron James because mm -hmm. y'all kept running into LeBron James. The year he arrived, LeBron James went to L.A. Right. So my attitude is, had DeMar DeRozan stayed there, mm -hmm. he'd have been a champion with the Toronto Raptors. How do you feel about that once you hear something like that? Yeah, and never, you know, to discredit those guys. I mean, they, they, they won it. They deserve it. You know, right. I finally had got to a point to where, you know, I was happy for them. <laughs> but... For sure, I definitely feel like that. You know, the only person we couldn't beat was LeBron. That was, that that's just what it was. And I felt, off the year we had before, we just needed one more piece to kind of push us over the top. And that piece came to be LeBron going to the West. You know, and I didn't get an opportunity to see what would happen. But the utmost confidence within myself, I, I have no doubt in my mind, the same outcome would 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 have happened. Uh, you've played for some interesting coaches, and you went to Pop to play for him, yeah, and then yeah. you had Billy Donovan. Yeah. You know, and Donovan didn't win with Durant and Westbrook, but he's a Long Island guy, so ask. I've always thought he's a very, very good coach. Did you enjoy the years with Chicago with I, Billy D? He's good. I, lo I love Billy D, man. Billy D is one heck of a person and coach. You know, um, my time there, the way he embraced me, the way he allowed me to step in and be the, be the leader that I was, he a great, man, great coach, great guy. I feel, I feel like he don't get the, the props that he fully deserved. Um, as a underrated, coach, huh? Underrated. He's, he's definitely underrated, you know, for sure. And I, I wish him nothing but the best. You know, he allowed me to be myself um, coming coming to Chicago. You know, um, he made it he made it easy for all of us. You know, I got nothing but love and respect for Billy.